Saturn's rings are among the most dazzling sights in the solar system. Their complex nature and shimmering appearance make the planet a standout among the others. They're certainly one of the great wonders of the universe and have been for centuries. We know now that Saturn isn't the only planet with a ring system. The other three giant planets have been confirmed to have rings, and there may be a few other solar system bodies with them. It's just that Saturns are the best known and most easily seen. However, in many forms of visual media, which may or may not depict the planets as you would really see them, one or more of the giant planets other than Saturn can be depicted with a more visible ring system. Most often, it's this one, the planet Uranus. If you've seen as much material about the solar system as I have, you've probably seen the seventh planet depicted with a discernible set of rings around it. I've seen Uranus look like this in books, in TV shows, and even on this cute little plush toy depicting the planet. Why is it that of all the planets that aren't Saturn, Uranus is the one that's most often depicted with rings? What are the rings of Uranus really like? Let's start by answering the second question before we get to the first. Uranus does not have the spectacular set of rings that surround Saturn. Its 13 known rings are very dark and mostly very narrow. We actually discovered them before we sent a spacecraft to the planet. In March of 1977, astronomers on the Kuiper Airborne Observatory were observing Uranus passing in front of a faint star. They hoped that this event would tell them more about the nature of the planet's atmosphere through means of occultation, but they learned more from it than that. Before the planet actually passed in front of the star, several dips in the star's brightness occurred. This happened again when Uranus moved out of the star's way. The spacing and timing of the dips provided the first evidence that Saturn was not the only planet in the solar system with rings. From this observation and a few more conducted later, it was determined that there were about nine narrow rings surrounding Uranus. The Voyager 2 spacecraft, launched several months after the discovery of the Uranian rings, got the chance to get a close look at them in January 1986. It saw a couple of new rings and closely photographed the other ones that were previously known. In Voyager's photographs, the rings looked like slim white lines against the dark, speckled sky. The images look like this due to how dark the rings are. The sunlight at Uranus is about 370 times dimmer than it is at Earth. Voyager 2 already had to have a software upgrade in order to get sharp pictures of Uranus and its moons. Imagine how tough it was to actually see the rings. Voyager scientists compared taking pictures of Uranus's rings to taking pictures of a pile of charcoal briquettes at the foot of a Christmas tree illuminated only by a one-watt light bulb at the top of the tree, which is pretty darn difficult if you can't tell. Long exposure times were needed in order to see the rings at all. The exposure times and image processing by JPL are the reasons the pictures of Uranus's rings turned out like this. They're not really that bright. Even the dense outermost rings reflect only about 2% of the incoming sunlight, which is already not that great. If you were to fly somewhere close to Uranus's equator and look back at the planet, the rings would look like dark stripes against the cloud tops. Yes, this is a real Voyager image, and the only one I could find taken from that vantage point. What's in the rings that makes them this dark? Their composition has not been clearly determined, but examining the spectral data gathered from observations made by Voyager 2 and varying telescopes has given scientists reason to believe that they contain material similar to chimney soot as well as ices. Surprisingly, though, there actually isn't much dust in the main rings. When Voyager 2 observed them up close, scientists were surprised to find that these rings contain mainly large particles no smaller than a golf ball and up to 20 meters in size. Passing behind Uranus and looking back at the rings, Voyager 2 actually found sheets of dust in between them. Somehow, dust is being swept out of the main rings. With the other giant planets, this is caused by shepherd moons, who influence the shape of the rings with their gravity as they orbit the planet. At least two shepherd satellites were discovered around Uranus by Voyager 2 in 1986, flanking either side of the broadest and most prominent ring, the Epsilon Ring. 
Yeah, Uranus's rings have an unusual naming scheme. Most of them are named after letters in the Greek alphabet, but a few are numbered 4, 5, and 6. It's a rather confusing naming scheme. Why they couldn't stick to a consistent pattern, I have no idea. Anyway, these two shepherd moons, now called Cordelia and Ophelia, were the only two shepherd satellites that could be found within the main Uranian rings. The other small moons of Uranus orbit well outside the main rings. Whether there are any small moons closer to Uranus than the nearest known moon Cordelia is uncertain. Observations made by the Hubble Space Telescope and reanalysis of old Voyager images over a decade after the spacecraft's visit showed scientists that there were a few dusty rings and a few more moons around Uranus. One of the rings orbits closer to Uranus than the main system, while the other two orbit further away. These rings are wider than the narrow inner rings, and the outer two have an unusual color scheme. The new ring, named after the Greek letter Nu, not because it's newly discovered, appears to be slightly reddish in color, while the outer Mu ring is significantly blue. If only there were orange, yellow, and green rings between them. It's suspected that the red in the new ring comes from iron or organic particles of some kind. The satellite MAB orbits within the Mu ring, so it's possible that it could be supplying the ring particles in a manner similar to the way Enceladus supplies the particles to the E ring around Saturn. The colors of the Uranian rings are not their only unusual feature. Remarkably, when thermal images of Uranus are taken, the rings show up clearly, particularly the outer Epsilon ring. With these thermal images of the rings, scientists are able to measure their temperature. At minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit, it turns out that they are actually a bit warmer than the average cloud top temperature of Uranus itself, minus 371 degrees Fahrenheit. The fact that they hold on to heat somewhat better than the planet itself is a good indication that there might be some organic compounds in them that allow them to absorb what little radiation they get from the sun. Clearly, there's a lot we don't know about Uranus's rings. Being so dark and orbiting a planet so far away from the sun make them hard to study. With no planned mission to Uranus in the foreseeable future, we'll have to rely on space telescopes and Earth-based technology to understand them. Hopefully, we may get some answers with the launch of the James Webb Telescope. Here's hoping! Now that you understand a little more about Uranus's rings, I think it's time we determined why it's the one planet other than Saturn that's depicted with rings around it most often. Not with a song! As far as complexity goes, Uranus's rings are a very distant second to Saturn's magnificent system. They don't show up well without either long exposure photography or special camera filters. But there is another part of the Uranian system that requires similar image processing to bring out the fine details. Uranus itself. Uranus is not a very picturesque planet. The close-up images Voyager 2 captured of it in 1986 showed it looking like a giant turquoise billiard ball floating in space. Even when it was at its closest to the planet, the only features Voyager could make out on Uranus in visible light were a few high-altitude methane clouds. Luckily, the spacecraft was capable of imaging in wavelengths outside of the visible spectrum. Images taken in ultraviolet light show that Uranus does have abandoned structure to its atmosphere like the other gas giants. It's just that those cloud patterns aren't as easily visible. Combining images taken through different wavelengths and filters gives us a more vibrant Uranus than what we would really see. Imaging in infrared not only reveals more cloud features, but the planet's rings also show up. It takes false color and lots of computer enhancement to bring out the atmospheric detail here. When presenting the planets on posters and books or other sorts of materials, the people who create these things like to give them a bit of flair in their appearance. So they tend to use the most eye-catching images they can find regardless of how realistic the planets appear. I talked more about this in my True Colors of the Universe video. I recommend you check that out for more information. 
To make the planet Uranus appear more interesting than it really is, these visual artists can do one of two things. They can either present the planet in one of these computer-enhanced false color images, or they can pick a natural color image and just add in the rings. The latter option, which is less inaccurate, I'll admit, seems to be the more favored of the two choices for how to depict Uranus. Giving the seventh planet a distinct set of rings does give it a bit more visual appeal. So, that's not what I was going to say. So how about the other two ringed planets? Why don't we see either Jupiter or Neptune depicted with rings around them as much? The answer, again, may have to do with the appearances of these two planets. Unlike Uranus, though, Jupiter and Neptune have less of a uniform appearance. Jupiter, in particular, is a colorful giant, with bands of red, white, and brown flowing across its surface, along with storms like the Great Red Spot. Jupiter has quite a vibrant color scheme. Looking through the images returned by the Juno spacecraft, we see that the planet looks a lot like a Monet or a Van Gogh painting. Having such a colorful atmosphere makes adding rings into images of Jupiter unnecessary. Besides, there's not much to it anyway. Jupiter's rings, like those of Uranus, are thin and faint, so they're not easy to see. They're much dustier and don't contain many large particles, though. To see them well, you need to go behind Jupiter and look back at it towards the Sun. This is how Voyager 1 found them back in 1979. It's also the best way to get a view of the rings of Neptune. If you thought imaging Uranus's rings was difficult, well, it doesn't get any easier as you go further from the Sun. Neptune's rings, like those around Jupiter and Uranus, are very faint. Making things even more difficult is the fact that sunlight at Neptune is over two times weaker than it is at Uranus. Flying behind Neptune in 1989, Voyager 2 had to leave its camera shutters open for up to ten minutes at a time to allow for enough sunlight in order to view the rings in their entirety. Seeing the photographs Voyager sent back of the rings show just how dusty and thin they are. One unique aspect of Neptune's ring system is the presence of bright arcs in the outermost ring, which make it look very clumpy. These ring arcs were actually discovered before the rest of the system, and gave astronomers the impression that Neptune didn't have a complete system of rings. Since Neptune's ring system is so hard to see, it's no wonder most depictions of the planet don't include them. I suppose that isn't a huge loss, though. Neptune has other interesting features. Even though Neptune isn't as colorful as Jupiter, it does have a very dynamic atmosphere, much more so than Uranus. White clouds and dark spots come and go across the face of the planet carried by some of the solar system's fastest winds. The way the weather activity constantly changes on Neptune gives it a captivating appearance. So, as with Jupiter, the rings around Neptune may not be terribly impressive, but the active nature of the planet's atmosphere makes up for it. Even at three billion miles from the sun, there's no shortage of wonder out here. So now you can see that there's a lot more to appreciate about the gas giants besides their ring systems. Uranus and the other three gas giants are all active worlds with windy atmospheres and numerous moons. The rings around them are just part of the miniature solar systems they govern. Uranus may not have rings that rival Saturn's in beauty, but their mysterious nature does make them worth further investigation. The four giant planets may not be alone in possessing ring systems. As I said at the beginning, there are other solar system bodies that are thought to have rings as well. We don't exactly have good photographic evidence for them, but further studies may bring up some surprises. Studying exoplanets has provided us with evidence that rings are not unique to the planets in our solar system either. This one here is thought to have a system over 600 times larger than Saturn's. All this should tell you that rings aren't exactly an uncommon feature in the universe. Okay, I'm not ending this with a Beyonce number. The four gas giants are just some of what could be a multitude of ringed worlds in outer space. What we discover around other stars could show us more worlds of intrigue and more sights to see. There's no telling what's to be found on or around a planet in a galaxy far, far away. I'm done here. <laughs>